Sure. Who are you? Just introduce yourself. Uh, well, my name's Brian. I'm the community director at Bungie. Yeah. So your job is to? Uh, my job is to uh, talk to people like you. Uh, no, actually, uh, me and uh, people like Eric, who works with me, um, really our job is to help bolster and support our fan community, sort of be the liaison between the fans and the development team, and play a lot of Halo, travel around to places like Gamescom, and uh, really just help to build up our Bungie fan base and promote our titles. Well, I mean, Halo 1 and Reach are very different games in many ways, but they're also very similar. Uh, you know, Reach is a prequel, so our biggest influence was we looked at all the Halo games, obviously, and wanted to carry forward the best parts of each game, but if you had to pick one single biggest influence, it was Halo Combat Evolved, so we wanted to really sort of recapture that spirit and that mystery and that sense of exploration and you know the first time you get out of that drop pod and you see this halo world around you we wanted to recapture that with the first time you set foot on a reach so a lot of similarities kind of from a mood and a tone and sort of the, the vibe that you're going to get but obviously technically speaking they're worlds apart one game was nearly 10 years ago on a totally different piece of hardware at the time super innovative really pushed that box but now we're able to do things we can never do before Four player co op, the battles have gotten bigger, the game just looks a lot better, obviously. You got a whole squad of Spartans, you got armor abilities, new weapons, new vehicles, you're flying up into space, you're playing over Xbox Live. None of those things obviously were possible back in the original Halo days. So, you know, the games have gotten bigger, they've gotten more complex, they've, more people have to work on them now, they, they're just more challenging to produce, and gamers' tastes have just grown. People expect more out of the game. So, you know, a lot of those sort of Predominant themes haven't changed, but Reach just bigger, better, more, everything you come to know and love. Okay, um, well, I mean, most of our influences from Reach and all the Halo games really sort of initially come internally. I mean, first thing the team does is we look back at what have we done before, what worked great, what could we have done better, what should we have improved upon, and those things start to shape the initial vision for the games that we're, that we're gonna make, like Reach, and that was the first starting point. But we also are making a new kind of game, a game about a team, a game about a group of characters. So, you know, we looked at even things like movies and TV series, like Band of Brothers and Seven Samurai, these sort of stories about a tight-knit squad of people that are fighting in, these, in the trenches together, and that helped influence some of our storytelling and presentation, but the biggest gameplay influence was the Halo series and was Halo Combat Evolved. What's the best thing about Reach? That's that's a hard question. I mean, for me, I think the best thing is really just the, the sum of all the parts. There's so many different types of games to play, so many features, so much content, and so much opportunity for fans to customize and create and share their own content that there's something for everybody in this game, and it's going to keep people playing and experiencing new things for months and years after release. So there's just a lot to do in this game, and even more to do once the community really gets their teeth into it and starts making their own maps, their own games game types and the community itself already shaped the future of this game. Well, I mean, you're right. Halo Combat Evolve really was built as a single-player campaign game. It still had co-op, but it was really campaign-centric. Multiplayer came in extremely late. In fact, up until about eight weeks before the game was done, there possibly wasn't even going to be a sort of competitive multiplayer experience. And the team really started playing it more, having a lot of fun, and kind of felt like they had something special there. And obviously, it took off. And even though you had to go into somebody's house and bring your whole Xbox and set up the LAN, it became very popular, and once Xbox Live was introduced with Halo 2, we were really able to kind of bring that to a whole new level and make multiplayer a true huge part of Halo, and kind of became synonymous with the campaign, and you're right, as things have progressed, some people only play Halo for multiplayer, but some only play for the campaign. So for Reach, for us at Bungie, we don't have, it isn't one over the other. 
Both game modes are given equal priority. They're both really important to us. And in a lot of ways, the campaign is a more multiplayer driven experience now. Four players can play cooperatively. I mean, there's not a single part of Reach that you can't do with other people, whether it's watching a safe film, working in Forge, playing Firefighter, even playing the campaign. The whole game now is meant to be something that's more fun with your friends. And we now have the technology, we have the live network to enable us to do this kind of thing. But interestingly enough, overwhelming majority of our team in terms of development, it's probably about 80% of our studio in terms of manpower is focused on building the campaign because it's that much more intensive and that much more complicated even though multiplayer is the thing people will be playing for years to come. So, short answer, they're both really important but we're really starting to blur the line between what's single player and what's multiplayer. They're really one and the same now. Yeah, Reach, without a doubt, it's the biggest Halo game by far. I mean, ODST was really a side project for us. It was a very small group of people. It was only about a year, year and a half worth of development. Reach, on the other hand, the full might of our studio, about three years worth of work, rebuilding our engine and tech from the ground up. It's the biggest Halo game we've ever made. It's the most ambitious game we've ever made in our entire studio. So it's a very, very different beast. Um, and hopefully our fans will agree when they just see how much we put into that game. So right when Halo 3 wrapped up, basically what happened is most of the team, the majority of the team, started working on Halo Reach, and a few people went off on the side and decided to make the ODST game. But yeah, Reach started in pre-production right around the end of Halo 3. Obviously we produced some DLC for Halo 3, we had some people that were still producing maps and content for, for a little while, but meanwhile Reach was getting off the ground, concepts were being fleshed out, design docs were being written, the technology was being built. So yeah. It, Pretty much right after Halo 3, the work began on Reach. So, I don't actually remember us ever saying Halo 2 was our last Halo game, because um, really at the time Halo 2 was being I developed. I just wrote the news on our page. <laughs> well, find the quote, find the recording, I want to hear when someone said that, but honestly, in I all truth... I think Frank said this. Uh, yeah, but it's Frank, so there you have it. Um, okay. The reality is we knew about halfway through Halo 2 that we had too much game to fit into one game. We had already started to think about Halo 3, but the truth is, Reach is our last Halo game. We've already... We're done. The game's been handed off and the majority of our team is already working on a brand new project. So we have a lot of work to do, a brand new universe, a brand new type of game, and uh, it's going to take our entire studio working hard to uh, really execute what we have in mind for the types of stories and gameplay that we envision for the next 10 years. So we're pretty much done. That's it. I mean, obviously we're going to continue to support Reach, but no more Halo games from Bungie. No more Halo games from Bungie? No more Halo games from Bungie. No more Halo games later. I'm sure there is, but that's not my call and you know, I'll be waiting just like you to see what's next. Okay, so maybe you can uh, say bye bye to the German Halo community from Halo Base. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, Avita Zen, Halo Base. Thank you for your support. Halo Reach will be out in stores on September 14th. We'll see you online. Perfect. Thank yeah, you very yeah. Much.